Hey everyone, it's Eminelli, and today we are playing a game that, uh, well, it's been talked about on the channel a couple times in the comments and stuff, and I'm finally getting around to playing it. It is called Love is Strange. It's a fan-made visual novel of Life is Strange where nothing bad happens and people are alive and not missing, and everything's good and happy. Um, so I'll probably just be going for the Chloe route this playthrough, uh, cause, I mean, my girl Chloe, I love her. <laughs> but yeah, so I'm gonna be basically, I'm gonna be reading it and, uh, doing some really good, <laughs> some really good voice acting, so look forward to that, I guess. And let's go ahead and get started. <laughs> After I, I... I I spilled a little bit of bleach on my foot, and I think it's starting to actually irritate it, so I have to go wash that off. Okay, now I'm back with a bleachless foot, so uh, let's go ahead and get started now. Ugh. Insert groan here. Oh, also, sorry, before I forget, um, apparently there's nods to the main game, uh, but I think there might be some Life is Strange spoilers just in terms of if you think really hard about things. So I'm going to go ahead and say that you probably shouldn't watch this playthrough if you haven't played Life is Strange. Or if you don't want to be spoiled for Life is Strange. Okay, continue, continuing. Oh no, a hard choice already. I'm going to hit snooze because that's how I live my life. I slam my hand down on my phone. It shuts up, thankfully. I stretch out of bed, trying to make the most of how warm and comfortable I feel before I have to get up. Even from beneath the covers, I can hear the chirps of the birds outside and the low murmurs of voices in the hallway. And of course, someone's playing music. The people I share a dormitory with are worse than roosters. <laughs> Heavy bass vibrates through the paper-thin walls, and even clamping my pillow over my head doesn't do much to muffle the sound. Guess I better get up. My choices didn't matter. I hit the snooze button and it didn't work. Oh man, zero out of ten. No, just kidding. That's a joke. Oh my god, if you worked on this game and you're, you're watching this, I'm sorry, that was a joke. I didn't mean it. I stretch out, yawning, as I make my way to the window to feel the sunlight on my skin. Lisa seems to be enjoying it too. She's grown like crazy over the past year. My mom would be so proud. Wow. A whole year already. It's hard to believe I've been at Blackwell for that long. I'm so glad that I came back to Arcadia Bay, and not just for Blackwell Academy, although I'd be lying if I said that wasn't a huge part. I liked Seattle, but it never really felt like home. Arcadia Bay is the place I grew up in, the place where I made all of my best memories and had so many adventures, each one as different as every new day. Pirates and superheroes. This was the best place to grow up. Well, I'm biased, but I really do feel that way. I don't want to sell Seattle short, of course. I lived there for five long years. I really do miss my friends there and my parents. I was so glad to see them this summer. But I know that coming back here was the right choice for me. I'm technically an adult now, which is something I'm still getting used to. I definitely still feel like a kid in a lot of ways. I'm lucky to have my parents' support and my scholarship, which I've somehow managed to keep into my second year. Go Max! And I can't forget one of the most important parts. Blackwell's brought me back to Chloe Price, my best friend! Oh my goodness. I love Chloe! It took a little while, but we picked up right where we left off. Actually, we did even better because we didn't exactly part under the best circumstances. But the greatest thing about Chloe is that she's brutally honest with her feelings. Those first few weeks were seriously awkward, but we got through it. I'm determined to be there for her now, even if I couldn't before. Luckily, someone was there for Chloe while I was gone. Rachel Amber. She's totally gorgeous. And she's a really great person, too. She's almost too perfect. That <laughs> done. Damn. A scary note there. But she's one of those girls that's just impossible to hate, even though Victoria Chase seems to have found a way. It's funny because, like, when I think about... <laughs> I'm just... An, I feel like... <laughs> I'm always, like, I'm secretly jealous of Rachel Amber. Just because Chloe brings her up all the time when Max and Chloe are having, like, deep conversations. But I do understand that she's really important to Chloe and stuff. I'm just always like, oh, Rachel, when <laughs> you're so perfect and everyone loves you. If only I was also Sugoi. At first, I thought that Rachel and Chloe were total opposites. But they're really more like wolves of the same pack. Let's just say that knowing both of them is like being an accessory to every incident of dubiously criminal mischief in the bay. But even if we didn't have Chloe and Rachel, I've got other friends here too. Uh, Dana, Stella, Alyssa. Actually, I can count almost everyone on my floor as a friend. Even Brooke, who is, um, abrasive. It took some getting used to, but it's just her way of being friendly. Fuck that. Brooke is the worst. She's the worst. <laughs> Pretty impressive for a shy geek like me, am I right? 
Take Kate Marsh, for example. She's one of the very first people who befriended me at Blackwell. Kate is probably the most kind-hearted person I've ever met, and she's an incredibly talented artist. She's one of the only students at Blackwell that unabashedly wears her heart, or I guess her religion, on her sleeve. I know that she gets flack about it sometimes. But I think it's really cool that she works so hard to create a comfortable environment for other religious and or abstinent students, even if I'm not in her Bible study group or anything. I get along with almost everyone, except for my neighbor across the hall. Victoria Chase is the head of the Vortex Club, with all the reputation that goes with it. Even after a year, I'm not entirely sure what the Vortex Club even does, aside from underage drinking. I've heard that being in it is good for your resume, but I never see them doing anything to actually improve or benefit the school outside of partying. Oh well, it's not really my place to judge, even though Victoria herself does a lot of judging. Hasn't she heard the old ad adage about not saying anything at all if you've got nothing nice to say? Also, I'm apologizing ahead of time if I mispronounce some words. There's some words I see in writing a lot but never really hear, so I have a hard time with them. I'm apologizing ahead of time. It's hard not to wither under the ice queen stare of hers, or feel totally lame in the presence of her $6,000 camera. She has a great eye though, I'll give her that. I can't spend all morning daydreaming by the window though. I've got to get dressed, I don't want to miss my first class. Hey, do you ever just wake up and then you just think about everyone that you interact with that day, what they mean to you, in a way that seems vaguely like an introduction <laughs> chapter? I do, every day. Especially because Mixed Dog told us last week that they had a surprise coming up on Monday. I wonder what it'll be. They're one of the best teachers I've ever had. They're always supportive of my work and I'm always smiling. I knew Blackwell Academy took on the best of the best, but I had experience to believe it. Mixed Dog is so freaking cool. I'd better hurry up and get going, then maybe I can find some nice time to hang out with my friend before class starts. I have a feeling that like Chloe and Rachel are going to laugh at my generic brand t-shirt and jeans, like they always do, but I've come to terms with my style. I should make sure I have everything I need before I head out. Um, I'm gonna check my phone. <laughs> uh, I'm a teenager of the t 21st century. I need to check my phone at all times. This is how I live my life and I'm unashamed. I can't leave my room without a quick scan of my feed, the modern equivalent of being the morning, newspa morning newspaper. That's the millennial condition, I suppose. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> I hate it when like people are like, oh, these kids looking at their phones all the time. I'm like, shove it, okay? I have like the most information at my fingertips that anyone's had the last like million years. Calm down. <laughs> of course, Victoria's already posted her morning mirror selfie. Like with 28 people posted five minutes ago. But she does look really nice in that cashmere sweater. I'd hit like too, but I know she's not interested in my approval. She might never wear that sweater again if I did. Nerd cooties. Heh. I'm kidding, I, I think. I need to stop sinking to her level and being all judgy. Okay, I feel like the clear course of action is put on the bag, but it seems so clear that it makes me think that it's like a trick question and I really I should put on the bracelets. Okay, I'm gonna take this as a trick question, so I'm gonna put on my bracelets. Chloe gave me one of her punky spike bracelets a few months ago. I'm clumsy, so I thought I'd instantly take my eye out by wearing it. But it turns out the secret of thrashings is that the studs are actually pretty dull. <laughs> I have um I have a headband that has like spikes on it, and I went to like knock my head against my friends once, and I just like stabbed him right in the head with it. I felt bad. I just wasn't thinking. I guess I really am ready for the mosh bit now. Shaka bra! The bracelet I slide on next to it is all woven rainbow threads. Rachel gave it to me. I was pretty surprised when she did. Rachel's got like a zillion friends. Maybe she makes them for everybody? I can't believe Rachel is a friendship bracelet slut. SMH. <laughs> Can you imagine if someone was like, seriously like, you're a friendship bracelet slut? Oh, put on bag, okay. It's okay, I gotta do all of it. I can't forget my bag and I don't wanna forget my camera either. I'm glad it's managed to survive this long. It's really old and not in a cute boat Faux vintage way. It's legit ancient. But that's what I wanted. A total timelessness to my photos. As I slide my camera into my bag, I look at the little dough pin that Kate gave me a few days ago. It's a warm bronze color. She said that she found it in a bookshop in Portland and that she thought I would like it. I do, but I'm just flattered that she thinks of me at all. Oop, there it is. I think I've got everything, but I have a feeling I'm forgetting something. Oh, my journal. I can't leave without it. I take it just about everywhere. I guess it's a little old fashioned to me, and I know that just getting a blog would be way more secure, but I'm used to writing by hand. There we go, all set. 
As I head out into the hallway, I finally spot the source of the music. It's all coming from Dana's room. The door's wide open, like it usually is. This is definitely way too much bass for a Monday morning. I cross the hall, shaking my head. I knock on Kate's door, but there's no response. Maybe she's already headed to class. I'm a little sad I missed out on her usual morning violin playing, not that I would have heard much of it over Dana's music. It doesn't surprise me that I can smell weed and hear the sound of a spray can drifting from the bathroom. Rachel and Chloe, up to no good. Again. But I guess that's the company I keep. Victoria's usually got her door open or music playing like Dana, but it's quiet this morning. I guess she went to class early too. I've never seen her show up late to anything. Oh, the places you'll go, Max. Where to now? I gotta go to the bathroom. I have to hang out with Chloe. When I reach the bathroom, I find Chloe smoking in the corner, slouching there with a joint pinch between her fingers. Rachel's busy adding graffiti to the opposite wall. Dang, girls! This destructive. Or I guess just Rachel's doing it, but still, destructive. I'm gonna talk to Chloe. <laughs> Sorry, Rachel. This is a Chloe run. Having fun, Chloe? Chloe grins at me, giving her usual up to no good look. Yep, I'm totally getting lit over here. I groan, and Chloe just bursts out laughing amid a cloud of sharp smoke. You're terrible, you know that? And you love it, but what's up? I'm pretty sure you did come over here for a hit. I lean against the wall next to Chloe, nudging her with my elbow. Look how cute Max is! Look how cute Chloe is! Oh my goodness, everyone's cute. I'm not a fan of how weed smells. Oh, that's real. <laughs> that's super real. That's the realest thing. I've Max is me, but just because of that. But I've gotten used to being around it by now. It seems to chill Chloe out, and I'm all for anything that keeps her happy. Just want to see what my best friend's up to this early in the morning. And ask what you think of Myth Mixed Dog's surprise today. I can't figure out what it could be. Chloe shrugs, taking another drag. When she breathes out, the smoke twists and turns in the air before dissipating under the fluorescent lights. It makes you want to take a picture. Chloe laughs. I know that look. You want to take a photo, huh, hipster? Five years apart or not, Chloe still knows me so well. She proves it all the time. I can take a thousand photos of Chloe and never get tired of her face. <gasps> okay, I'm sorry. I just got excited. Is it that obvious? Chloe smirks at me and bumps the toe of her boot into my sneaker before sucking back on the joint and getting sailing through her nose. Save your photos for dogs class, Max. As for whatever the surprise is, I don't know. I'm just glad we made it into the same class this semester. Just like we were in elementary school, huh? I grin. Chloe may look all punk rock on the outside now, but I know on the inside she's still the same girl I used to watch anime and play pirates with. My crazy, rebellious, amazing friend. She didn't have the blue hair when we were little, but she's always had a wild heart. I'm glad we're together, too. Chloe smiles at me. Anyway, I want to be good and buzz when the time class starts, so I need to finish this thing. I'll catch you later, Super Max. Oh my gosh. See you soon, Chloe. Max's voice, like her actual voice, is so like, Chloe! I like, <laughs> I wish I could try to do character voices, but like I really can't. I'm just, I'm not good at keeping them the same, so I'm sorry you have to deal with me floundering a bit through character voices. Okay, let's talk to Rachel. Hey, Rachel. Rachel looks up at me. It's warm, but as usual, it's a little intimidating. Oops. There's something about Rachel that makes me feel kind of shy. She can be hard to read. Hey, how's it hanging, Max? Damn, girl. I could ask you the same thing. Rachel looks back at the wall, smirking, as she gives another shake of her spray can. I look at it, too. The paint is bright gold, dripping down the wall from a tangle of letters. I can't quite tell what it says. I'm leaving my mark on this school. Which is still totally against the rules. Since whatever rules ever applied to me. She laughs at her own joke, which makes me twitch into a smile too, before I have to tilt my head away from the fumes, eyes watering. Dang, bad girls, bad girls, what you gonna do? Are you headed to class soon? Yeah, but let me guess, you're wondering what dogs gonna surprise us with today. That's another thing about Rachel, she's always on the ball and knows what's going on with everyone and everything. I think she might be omniscient. Yeah. Rachel laughs, twirling her paint can in her hand. Her fingers are nimble and light against the smooth surface. I bet you it's another photo contest. I'm sure you'll win it, Max. She and Chloe have been so supportive of me. Their praise can be a little overwhelming sometimes, but I know they really mean it. I'm laughing, so I'm like, her face does not look like she's being supportive. Her face looks like she's being sarcastic. But no, Rachel's cool. Because Chloe wouldn't be friends with someone that was mean to Max. So, we're all good. Chloe, I get, but Rachel, we're not that close. 
So it means a lot that she's so encouraging anyway, even if I don't entirely get what's in it for her. Rachel's honestly kind of a mystery to me, one they have yet to figure out even a year and I would I would feel if they were like, hey, we're gonna make a, uh, a, a visual novel, Life is Strange, and we need to develop Rachel's entire character, I'd be like, damn, that is not a task I want to undertake. Because like, you get like such different, because basically all you hear of her is what other people saw her as, and it's like such, everyone has like different opinions about her, and I'm just like, dang, who is Rachel really? I wonder if Chloe's got the puzzle solved. I've always been too shy to ask much about their friendship, but they're thick as thieves. Thanks, Rachel. I hope so. Don't worry about it. Anyway, I want to finish this up, if that's cool with you. I'll see you in class. Rachel gives a little toss of her hair before focusing back on the wall. Uh, let's go. Okay, we gotta meet more people, so let's go to the courtyard. I head outside the dorms and see Kate sitting on a bench out on the front lawn, sketchbook in hand. Up ahead, I see Victoria focus on a bulletin board. I guess I do have time to chat. Let's talk to Kate first. Hey, Kate! Kate looks up from her sketchbook and gives me a warm smile. Good morning, Max. It's good to see you. I'm happy to see her, too. Come to think of it, Kate's been a little too hard to get a hold of lately. Oh my gosh, I'm just... There's so many girls. I only have, like, one girl voice. <laughs> it's okay. Everyone will just have the same voice. It's fine. She seemed a lot quieter than usual. She's not the loudest person to begin with, but maybe she has something on her mind. Whatever it is, it doesn't stop her from greeting me as warmly as ever. That's Kate Marsh... Te That's Kate Marsh for you. I missed your violin playing this morning. Not that I would have heard much of it over Tana's music. I sit down next to Kate on the bench and see that she's sketching a few cartoon characters gathered around a fountain. Kate notices me looking and smiles softly, pen tapping idly against the paper. I thought I'd try to get some drawing in before class starts. When I'm feeling inspired, I always want to sketch right away, so I don't forget the images in my head. I look more closely at the page. Kate's drawings are always so cute and lively. She'd make an awesome character designer or a storyboarder or an illustrator for children's books. Any one of those would suit her. I know what you mean. I'll drop everything I'm doing if the time is right for a photo. I can't believe you can do this kind of stuff with just colored pencils. It's so cute. Thanks, Max. I've always loved your photos, too. Kate's compliments always warm my heart. The this part is I know that she means it. She's so sincere and positive. Speaking of photos, what do you think Mixed Dog's gonna surprise us with today? Kate's expression turns thoughtful and she clasps her hands on top of her sketchbook. I'm not sure. They seemed like really excited about it when I was helping them catalog a photography textbooks on Friday. I'd forgotten that Kate is Mixed Dog's assistant. Did they mention anything about the surprise other than being excited? Kate laughs and shrugs and she seems to glow. The cross hanging from her neck catches the sunlight and flashes bright and golden. Kate is literally Jesus in this. It's fine, don't worry about it. You are so curious about the world, Max. A lot of people would say I'm just nosy. Kate gives a little huff and continues drawing in her sketchbook, her pencil delicately tracing curves and lines. I think you just have a knack for adventure, like Gloria here. She's an amateur detective. Kate points to one of the characters in her drawing, a small figure peering into the fountain with huge, inquisitive eyes. A little cattail pokes out from under the character's long coat. Thanks, Kate. I'm glad you believe in me. I should get going, though. Kate nods. I wouldn't want you to miss Misk's dog surprise. I'll catch up soon. See you, Max. Okay, let's go talk to Victoria. Oh, I gotta do another girl voice. Oh, so hard. My name is Victoria. That's gonna be her voice. No, Victoria's cool. Victoria looks so focused on the message board. She's got her arms crossed like she's annoyed by what she's reading, but I'm not sure what it is she's looking at. I scan my eyes over the board. There are flyers for club meetings, another plea about the cat pics tablet, some stuff about global warming. Oh my god, the cat pics tablet's still going on? It's been a year, that's so sad. The average Blackwell Marquee. I don't usually go out of my way to talk to Victoria, but she might be the only other person who takes photography class as seriously as I do. It might be good to sp scope out what she thinks about today's surprise. Hey, Victoria! Victoria turns around, and for a split second, I see surprise in her face before it's replaced with a stern look. What do you want, Max? Her tone isn't totally hostile today. Guess that's something, at least. Me too, Max. Me too. Just wanted to say good morning, if that's okay. Victoria snorts and, snorts and rolls her eyes. I wouldn't call it a good morning as long as you're around. Wait, seriously? I throw my hands up in defense, giving a huff of exasperation. I can't catch a break with Victoria, can I? 
Wow, nice burn. Let me go to the nurse and get myself an ice pack. Victoria crosses her arms with an impatient side and gestures with her fingers. Really, what do you want? I glance back to the bulletin board and see a small flyer in the corner. It's an advertisement for a photography exhibition in Portland. I think I found what Victoria was looking at. Just wondering what you think Mixed Dogs got prepared for us today. You know, the surprise they mentioned last week? Victoria purses her lips and looks away for a second before turning back to me. I heard a rumor that's another photo contest, like last year. She sounds kind of tense about it. I still remember how she placed second in the photo contest last year. She hadn't looked happy about it at all. I know she busted her ass on it. Even I have to admit their submission was really good. I totally thought she'd win. I have a feeling she took losing a lot harder than she let on. If it is, I, um... Good luck, Victoria. That definitely wasn't the response Victoria was expecting. Her eyes widened, her mouth dropping open for a split second. Before she recovers. She's not scowling at me anymore, at least. Yeah, you too, Max. Oh. I wasn't expecting that either. Oh, me too! Doki Doki! Max! Same! We stand there for another moment. Neither of us seem to know what to say. Awkward. Victoria makes an irritated sound, finally breaking the silence. Look, I've got to get back to figuring out my schedule for the week. Club meetings and shit. I'm pretty sure that wasn't what she was doing, but I'm not about to call her out on it. Yeah, of course. I'll see you in class. She turns back to the bulletin board. Well, that definitely could have gone a lot worse. As far as encounters with Victoria Chase go, that was practically painless. Okay, so we just met the main cast, all four routes. Uh, the routes are Kate, Victoria, Rachel, and Chloe, if you didn't know. I'm going to go ahead and end it here uh, for the day. And next episode, I will continue to just m be completely inconsistent with voices. And we'll see what the mixed, mixed dog surprise is. Have a great day, everyone.